Welcome to Electric Evolution with Liz Allen. This podcast is about the journey to a more sustainable future in order for us to be able to do our bit to achieve net zero. I'll be discussing a variety of topics with experts in their field in order to educate and increase our knowledge of clean energy, electric vehicles and the electric vehicle infrastructure. So whether you're an individual wanting to make a difference at home, a small business or a corporate, this podcast is just for you. So hello and welcome to this, the Christmas episode of Electric Evolution. And this is episode number 68. So we've now been going just over 12 months and I can't believe it. It's just blown my mind. When I first started this podcast, you, if you look back to or listen back to the early ones, like kind of episodes one and two and sort of three, four, I was really, really nervous about all of this. I never expected it to be what it's what it's grown into. And I'm so pleased that it's grown the way that it has done. I've interviewed some amazing people during this last 12 months. So I always wanted this podcast to be something that would help people to understand a little bit more about net zero, about EVs, EV charging, heat pumps, solar energy, wind turbines and, and sustainable living. And that's kind of what I you know I always wanted it to be like this and actually those are the people that I've been interviewing during this last 12 months and it's just been fantastic so I want to start this episode by actually thanking every single one of my podcast interviewees who've been on this podcast journey over the last 12 months if it wasn't for you I wouldn't be where I am now as in 12 months down the line and I'm over the moon with the people that I've actually had on this podcast. So so thank you to all of you who've been on and joined me because your insights have educated me and hopefully everybody else who've been watching and listening, we've all taken insights from, from those people, those experts in their field. It's just been fabulous. So also to you guys, the the listeners and the viewers, if it wasn't for you, then you know, this, this podcast wouldn't be, it, it wouldn't be where it is now. I'm not saying it's, you know, it's not like Diary of the City of a CEO or anything like that, but we're getting probably about 800 people watching and listening between YouTube and the various audio channels. So every month. And, and that to me, it's never, it was never, ever about the numbers. It was about building a community and helping to educate, you know, everybody so that we all can, move towards an electric an electric future with electrification decarbonization and just doing what we need to do for net zero so my own personal journey has been a bit transformative as well over this last 12 months as as a family as if, if you've been listening and watching since we started you'll have seen episode two which was me in, in, speaking to my husband Richard Allen professor professor Richard Allen I should call him of course formal name um for from the University of Reading and we spoke about his work in climate change and educating people in that and actually I am going to be bringing him in again fairly soon to expand on what he's already spoken about but that was that was the beginning of the journey but i've spoken to so many so many people during the journey the majority of the ev cafe team i've interviewed most of those so um sarah sloman john curtis paul kirby sam clark not quite there's the one that got away which is johnny berry i will get you one day johnny berry <laughs> in the nicest possible way but there's been some absolutely you know some amazing people on Dr Ewan McTurk so my own personal journey and that of, of the fa of our family has been really eye-opening over the last 12 months we've done things that actually we never thought we'd be able to do in 12 months we've actually got solar panels on our roof so we're trying we've kind of had a, if you listen back to Graham Cooper's episode quite early on you'll hear him t talking about d democratization of energy so we started doing that we've got battery storage which my husband's obsessed with I have to tell you that bit we also at the same time we actually had an EV charger put in before we got the EV which sounds a bit mental doesn't it but but actually it was the way to do we it was it worked out best because 
having all three, the, the battery, the solar and the EV charger put in together for us was the best way to do it. And then getting an EV, getting an electric vehicle. Now, I want this is my next shout out. Dr. Ewan McTurk, if it wasn't for you, we probably wouldn't have actually moved to an EV as quickly as we did. But actually, so myself and my husband went out for a meal with, with Ewan in Oxford after EV Live at Blenheim Palace. And and he was the one, actually, who... He didn't convince us. He didn't twist his twist our arm or anything, but he made us realise that August was the right time for us to actually buy a new... Well, not a new EV, an EV. And actually, this is that's the other part of the journey. I've spoken to so many... Um, during the kind of journey to get an EV that that was a it was massive in itself speaking to the dealerships and actually realizing that maybe the dealerships weren't at, weren't the ones that, as, that were as knowledgeable as they should be you know I've spoken to Ben Travis who's a product specialist and um, a variety of other people who actually put some context on the you know what I needed to know about going when going to a, a dealership and what to ask them. And that's why, I, like I say, I kind of realised that the EVs that I was taking out of a test drive didn't necessarily mean I was going to buy them from those dealerships because they weren't giving me what I wanted. So actually, when we bought our EV, we went to a, a private dealer and he specifically deals with electric vehicles. And it was it was a used, it's a Hyundai Ionic. It's a 2021 um, make. We'd looked at all different ways of buying buying the EV. We'd looked at PCP. We'd looked at salary sacrifice. We'd looked at um, leasing. Um, but for us, buying outright was the was the main thing for us to do. So we traded in our VW Golf, and and we got the high end Ionic, known as the Wind Knife. But at the moment, it's it's slightly at the moment of recording, should I say, it's slightly poorly because I had a little bit of an argument with a bollard but we won't go into that okay um it's been seven years since I did anything that silly but we'll just move swiftly on because it's Christmas and this is the season of good cheer and I'm going to be cheery <laughs> anyway so so as I said looking back 12 months ago I really would not have expected to have interviewed all the wonderful people that I've 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 interviewed on this podcast and actually for 2024 I've got some more wonderful people coming up because now I've got a, a, a lot of fantastic interviewees under my belt it's given me a little bit of credibility so now I can approach other people which is fabulous so actually so so talking of driving electric by the way I've got to say I absolutely love it um I always said that I thought I was a bit of a petrol head before although I'm not a petrol head like some some people I did like my cars and my dad always liked his cars and my brothers always liked their cars etc etc so being the youngest girl I think that maybe that's where it all came from but actually do you know moving to electric just the it's they're so quiet they're so lovely to drive they're fun so one of the experiences I've actually had whilst I've had the EV is and I didn't expect this to happen straight away, but I got some work up in Coventry in Nuneaton. So we're talking, I live in Reading, so we're talking about 92 miles away. So it was really, I was quite nervous to start off with because the wind knife, our car, has, has only got a range of about probably, I think the most I got out of it was about 197 miles in the summer. I'm very accurate there, aren't I? And... And it's it's nine it's ninety two miles up to Nuneaton, which was the first place I was working in, um, and I knew I had to drive around from one place to another. So it meant that I had to use public charging. Now, that was a bit of an eye opener to me initially, but over time I got so used to it and so used to using ZapMap it made a massive difference and actually I am a planner I've always been a planner so I will I was I always plan my routes in advance now so I actually know that 
I know how many miles I can I can get away with having before I get I need to charge. I'm not as worried as I was initially. I do make sure that I do charge up. And when I was up in Neaton, I made sure I found um, a, lo um, a hotel with a charger outside. Made a, a whole load of difference. So anybody who's got ho hotels that don't have chargers, please get them to start having them. But actually, the one thing I would say is it's about, and lots of people have said this in this industry, they've said it's the right charger at the right place the right speed it's got to, it's got to be the right place and the right speed because otherwise what's the point so the place i was staying the there were two high power chargers and there was a 7 kilowatt so if i wanted you know if i just wanted a slow charge and i was staying overnight anyway so i put it put it on charge for 2 or 3 hours get my food get sorted in the hotel do a bit of work etc and come out and then I'd always because if it was I got it up to 80% and I always moved the car into a space because it's it's kind of it's what you should do it's charging etiquette anyway you know and it, if I needed to charge it up quicker there was a rapid charger there so I actually put it onto onto charge and it was charged up to 80% usually in a again in about half an hour so either I kind of mulled around in the lobby or went up and sorted myself out so I got it sorted for people who find the idea of public charging a bit of an eye you know a bit worrying actually you just need to do a bit of research it's it's not as difficult as people think and actually yes there are some charging networks that aren't as there aren't as reliable as others, but actually the longer you have an EV, the more you get to recognize the ones that aren't so reliable. So you're more likely to kind of exclude them from the zap map searches. So go to the ones, find the ones that work for you and actually just use, use those. And yet we do need to have more charges in the UK. We've got 50,000 now. We've got over 50,000 charges in the UK. You know, if you look at ZapMap, you'll see that there are pockets of areas where, you know, where we do need to have them. If I go up to Yorkshire, which so I'm originally from Halifax, as you probably know, if you've been listening for a long time. If I go up to Yorkshire, there aren't lots around the West Yorkshire area. Um, but it's, that's not going to be a problem because I'll make sure that I charge somewhere that's that's near enough for me to actually be able to get there and you know and back and I'll charge back on route. And actually, a lot of the EVs these days have got a, ma a big, a much bigger battery than we've got. We've got a thirty-eight and a half kilowatt battery. But actually, like I say, for us, yeah, I'd, it'd be nice to have a bigger battery. But actually, it's manageable. It's not that it. It's not. It's not a hardship for us. We are lucky that we've got the charger at home. We've got the we've got a drive, so we can do that. And not everybody has that ability. But actually, now I've stopped driving up to Nuneaton and and Coventry. I was doing that for about four months every single week and staying over, which was tiring, I have to say. But now I'm only going to be kind of going as far as sort of Luton and Hemel Hempstead and places like that. So. So I may only need to, I may need to charge less then, you know, so before I was coming back and topping up and going off and da 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 and all this kind of stuff, but may, I may not have to do that. So, so actually charging is all about how many miles you need to do in the first place, in, you know, on a weekly basis. If you have to drive hundreds of miles every week, then, then, you know, you, you had to, you have to plan. It's all doable. So for anybody who says that EVs and EV charging is not doable, it is. So please tell them to listen to this Christmas episode. Anyway, I'm I'm kind of I'm not trying to get on my soapbox on Christmas on at Christmas or <laughs> when this goes out on Boxing Day. I'm not trying to do that whatsoever. I'm trying to say let people listen because it's it's something they can do. It's not difficult, honestly. You just have to get your head around it. It's just it's change. People don't like change. Actually, that is a great segue onto my next my next section. So 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 my the business that I run is full circle continuous improvement. OK, and and actually, so what I wanted to do first, kind of moving on, is to say thank you to the people who work with me at full circle, who if they didn't do what they do, this podcast wouldn't be going out. And my social media, the social media presence, presence of Full Circle wouldn't be the way that it is. So 
for starters, Michelle Liddell, who I call my second brain. She is an absolute star, is the woman, honestly. Um, that Because of the way my brain thinks, and maybe you've some, read some of my um, social media blogs earlier on this year when I was actually diagnosed with ADHD, okay? At the age of 55, well, I was 54 then anyway. So, but that's another story. Um, but Michelle is, I have... Everything goes, so many things go around my brain and we are quite creative, but sometimes we kind of go off on a tangent. But Michelle is my second brain because I, I, I haven't got enough room in my first one. So I use her as my second brain and she is absolutely fantastic. She is my, you know, she does all of our digital um, media, our social media, just a wonderful person, the nicest person ever. Chris Hunter is the just the whiz on anything to do with writing our copy for for our social media posts he's just the nicest guy as well and i've been working with him and michelle for at least two, two well michelle's two years chris is nearly three so we've been working together for for quite some time now and he's and, and chris is absolutely brilliant um tom stanhope who produces these podcasts so he's the one with his finger on the pulse when it comes to getting them all, all, all ready and editing and getting rid of my fluffs as I've been talking through them. So he's an absolute star. So thank you to Tom, because if it wasn't for him, then we wouldn't, we wouldn't have podcasts in the first place. Finally, and, and actually, of course, very special to, in my heart, is my son, James. So James Allen... He's, he is actually, so he does a lot of our an analytics. So he's just gone 18 in October. I love him to bits, honestly. Um, he's going to hate me, hate knowing that I'm saying this because you, you know, what my mum's saying this about me. Um, but he's an absolute star. He does, like I say, he does all of our um, podcast stats. He looks at the an analysis on the website, see how we're doing, all our social media stats and kind of updates all of that. So so he's he's an absolute. Yeah, of course, I'm going to say that because I'm his mum anyway, aren't I? Of course, you know, but hey, there you go. So thanks. Thanks to James. Thanks to all of all of them. You know, all my lovely team for for being how, as fabulous as they are. Um, so in 2024, I just wanted to say that you're going to see a few changes at Full Circle CI, okay? We're changing our website. We're moving, we're pivoting um, into, into an area that I, I kind of recognise is, is needed within the EV charging infrastructure. So if you look over my shoulder, if you're watching this, and you've seen this before probably, and I've talked about it, there's the word Kaizen that is written in Japanese over my shoulder and the word in English which basically means small incremental changes. Now, in the EV charging infrastructure, small incremental changes are what the sector needs. Because I was reading an article today talking about making big changes in New Year and, and how sometimes you can set yourself up to fail if you try and set your heights too high to make these changes happen. And, and how you should actually um, introduce small in incremental changes to get there. Now, this resonated with me with this resonated with me so much because that's what I'm all about, and that's what the EV charging infrastructure needs. Actually, to have somebody around to look at the changes that they they need to make in order to ensure that people like me and you. EV drivers are happy because when it comes down to it, when we want the network to be used, the charging infrastructure network to be used, we want we want it to be working. So there are things that need, you know, we need to, the, the infrastructure needs to make EV drivers happy because we, we've, there's a million of us at the moment that are driving electric vehicles. We want a lot more people. We're looking at 300,000 charges by I think it was 2030 originally but I don't know whether it's I think it's going to be 2035 maybe I don't know which way that's that one's going but even so you know we need a reliable network and 
and you can't and I'm I'm I am not the kind of person to point out anybody's you know any operational issues but the one good thing that well there's I've got I could do quite a lot of things as well as talking on a podcast but the thing that I actually love doing is helping people diagnose operational issues and make it better so that they they get better results at the end for, and they get more people using the charges so so that's what you're going to be seeing from full circle over over the next 12 12 months i'm not here just to talk about full circle it was here to kind of talk about the the podcast of course but i had to mention what we're trying to do next year because i think it's really really important but look i just want to say i've really enjoyed talking to everybody on this podcast and all of you listeners and, and viewers that have reached out and made comments I really really appreciate it do you know what would be fantastic as well and this is from the heart from my heart actually if you've liked this podcast if you've like I say we're on episode 68 if you've liked it and whatever platform you've been on if you can actually put a comment or a review or something like that it would be fantastic because I'd love for more people to find out about it. That's what it's about. It's about education and helping people. And that's what I'm all, all, all about anyway. For those of you who've got to know me over time, hopefully you'll think, you know, I'm not just a, a gobby northerner. <laughs> but, but, but anyway, I'm going to finalise this by saying I want you to all have a fantastic an electrified Christmas and a wonderful new year and I can't wait to see how things go next year in 2024 I still I'm still in a bit of denial actually because I feel still feel like it's October by the way when I'm, I'm and it's December when I'm recording this so I, you know I can't believe I'm saying 2024 but I just want everybody to have a fantastic new year you're all doing such wonderful things out there and those of you who want to do more, keep listening, keep watching, keep researching and finding out what else you can do to, to kind of move us all towards the electrification journey that we all need to be on for net zero. But listen, on that note, have a happy Christmas and a fabulous new year. And I shall see you later. Lots of love. Bye. You've been watching Electric Evolution with Liz Allen. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon and you'll receive all of our weekly videos. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.